Welcome back to Axiom. Well, let's take a look at the final, yes, final moves of the game. And this time I'll try to record the audio using my phone's headset. See how that turns out. Okay, so this is, this is our position at the end of the previous video. And I have to say, this particular position is actually very strong. Because, you see, this cube, this orange cube, can move anywhere, anytime it wants. And grey cannot do anything about it. Because this scepter, on the one hand, is preventing a grey cube from being placed on top of it. And on the other hand, it prevents anyone from placing their scepter into this cube. Yeah, that's a really strong position. I like that. Okay, so, uh, the turn was to the Grey, and Team Grey decided to threaten this orange scepter from the other side by taking this piece and moving it all the way here. Now it can diagonally go here. Orange responded to this by moving back where they were on the previous turn. Seems like a, a waste of time. Okay, at this point Grey realizes that they can't really nail this orange scepter down, so they need to find another way up there. And they start building it by taking this cube and placing it here. So ideally next turn they can put it, put this cube here and get up there and threaten Orange's top position. Maybe even end up right here on top. Now Orange responds to this by um, building an escape route. Taking this cube and putting it here like this. Which is also preventing the way for this scepter yeah, it's blocking the way for the scepter. It can't end up here, which is inconvenient for Grey. Hmm. Grey responds to this by throwing some bait to Orange. If we take this cube, yeah, they abandon their original plan, take this cube and stick it craftily here. which is... Uh, it's, it's doing something, I guess. Anyway, Orange takes the bait. So the Orange Scepter is here, and it can destroy this grey one anytime it wants. But grey takes this Scepter and places it all the way here. It's a really nice standoff situation. You know, you kill my cube, I'll kill your cube. Really nice, a really tense moment. Except um, Orange takes this cube they've got here, which is a double dome, and just put it here. And suddenly this grey scepter doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, this really knocks the wind out of Team Grey's sails, so yeah, instead of trying to do something with this cube, they take this scepter and move it all the way here. And by all the way, I mean like one step. That's really the only scepter move they can take at this point. To which Team Grey respond, to which Team Orange responds by taking this scepter and moving it down here, which eliminates this grey cube. Revenge for the cube killed early in the game. Yeah, and this is the point where Team Grey just stops showing any signs of life. Yeah, you know, they could have at least said they resign, but they didn't. But yeah, from this position, pretty much nothing they can do will prevent Grey, f prevent Orange from going all the way here, and then. 
taking out either of these two scepters from this side. So yeah, orange has won. Okay. I kind of wish we could play more, you know, in playing were a bit more convenient, but as far as I know, there is no tabletop simulator module for the game. Which is a bit annoying. Actually, it's really annoying. It looks like this game shouldn't be that difficult to implement. Everything moves according to a grid. There are only three types of pieces. I suppose the lack of a module could be explained by the, well, the game being relatively unknown and very strange. I mean, the only reason I found out about it is by like randomly looking up things for the podcast, which I'm still working on. I'm just writing a few episodes ahead. Actually, I am kind of got stuck on episode 5, but um, luckily I finished uh, the section on where babies come from and moved on to mechanical simulators of flying. That looks nice. Okay. But Axiom is a nice game, you know? It, it's very simple, and even in this game, played by people who are playing it for the very first time, you could see how all the pieces, how everything interacts, how all the cubes and the scepters and the domes work together. If anything, if there's anything to change in the game, it's the fact that the rulebook, the player's aid card, and the player's aid card online all have slightly different wording of the rules. Also, look at this. It says here, diagonal, flat, lateral, over edge. When I see over edge, I move laterally over edge, not flat. Ah. Yeah, I'm still going on about that. Overall, Axiom is a really nice game. It's tricky. Maybe it could look a bit more marketable? Here's an idea. How about this? I think a Mario-themed axiom would be pretty nice. You, know, you could, say, replace scepters with uh, spectres, you know, booze, and uh, make the cubes textured like uh, Super Nintendo brick tiles, and it would actually look absolutely gorgeous, I think. If you got like light blue booze and negative colored booze and bricks of, um, like, I don't know, blue or orange types, it would look really well. Somebody pitched this to Nintendo. Because I'd really like to see this game get more recognition. It, it would be a nice uh, brain teaser. And as you can see here on the box, uh, 30 minutes, two players, two players 3D thinking strategy game. Yeah, it's supposed to take 30 minutes, not uh, a few weeks. So it would be a nice little game, if it were Mario-themed. And it looks absolutely gorgeous also when it's packed inside the box. Look at this. Okay, imagine if this were, like, boo-themed and in a plastic case. Okay, so I'll put this away for now, and next time, I don't know... I think I'm going to take inventory of all these simple 2000 games I've got, which is going to be a huge pile, and figure out which ones of them I haven't done yet, and which ones of them would be interesting to record. Because there are quite a few of them that are absolutely crazy, but also really, really terrible.